let's talk about some underrated books. It's easy to get caught up in the hype here on booktube. A lot of the same books get talked about again and again because they become popular and everyone wants to read them. I do a lot of that and I'm often disappointed in very hyped books and sometimes I'm not but I don't find myself a lot of time talking about books that are underhyped. But there are certain books I've read that I just feel like deserve more talk here on booktube and so I want to add to that. The first book on this list is The Children of Red Peak by Craig DeLuey. <laughs> I didn't bring my phone. The Children of Red Peak is about a group of kids who grew up in a cult. The book takes place in the present but also flashes back to their childhood. Very few members of their group survived this sort of doomsday massacre that happened when they were children. And so now as adults they're kind of looking back on it and dealing with the trauma surrounding it as well as the mystery of what happened because no one really knows what happened on that day. Even this group of adults, they were children when this happened and so they don't even fully trust their memories. I really enjoyed a lot of this book. I will say that there are parts that don't work for me nearly as much. The, the storylines of them as adults are not very exciting. They, they're all pretty unlikable people, but obviously a lot of that stems from the trauma and you tend to see the direct correlation to what happened when they were children and the decisions they're making now. Sometimes those storylines dragged because really they're just going about their day-to-day -day life while thinking about things that happened back in the day. But those flashbacks were so good. I listened to a lot of podcasts about true crime and so I've listened to a lot of like cult type podcasts and I actually listened to one very similar to this situation. And so it was like right before I read this too. So I just like was drawing a lot of parallels between the two but man did those flashbacks like really work. I feel like they did it so well. They showed exactly how these parents were kind of taken in by this cult leader and how like it started off so benign it started off as like a good positive community and then it like slowly twisted into something way way worse they also really like showed kind of the brutal escalation and man they really fucking went there and just showed like the kind of the bad side of devoting your life to some sort of faith especially when that faith is asking you to sacrifice so much and you have to do it in the name of faith it also shows like how some of these kids got swept in because of their parents beliefs and i actually really appreciated the ending but i thought it i feel like that's where i was expecting to get let down i didn't think they were going to go dark enough and i didn't think that the ending was going to work because you knew with this mystery that was going on like it felt like oh there's not going to be any sort of good explanation for this but I feel like the book really nailed it. I thought it was going to wimp out and like not go anywhere but it, it has an ending and whether or not I loved it I still really respected the choice. I gave this four to five stars and I would totally recommend it to anyone who is interested in any sort of cult literature because it's always fascinating. The next book on this list is Trouble is a Friend of Mine by Stephanie Tromley. This is the first book in a teenage detective story. It is about two kids who are kind of very different. One, the main character is the new girl in town and the kid she teams up with is this very like weird Sherlock-esque type of guy who's kind of a loner, barely goes to school, has a shitty home life situation but like he's really invested in figuring out any mystery that goes on in their town. I just love this. I feel like this somehow balance this really weird tone of dealing with some serious stuff, serious issues, while also being pretty freaking funny. I love the one-liners. It reminded me so much of like a Veronica Mars or something like that. Obviously not as dark as Veronica Mars, but like I adored this. <laughs> I think like if you enjoyed A Study in Charlotte, in my opinion this book is actually better than that one. I didn't love A Study in Charlotte but I absolutely adored this one and I feel like I constantly hear about the Brittany Cavallaro series and I never hear about this one and I think it deserves more hype. The next thing on this list is a comic book and that is Backtrack. I've only read volume one of this. I know that there's definitely at least one more volume out but I haven't had the chance to pick it up yet. This comic series is about a competition that takes place across the country as well as through different time periods. It allows the winner to correct one mistake in their life. Now I love a competition series but add in some time travel aspects and I'm there. This series, even just from the first volume, is so much fun. I feel like there's just so many possibilities of where this premise could go and I love that. I Obviously, like I said, like there's not a lot out, but the little bit that I've read of it, I feel like they did such a good job of 
kind of exploring these different um, like time periods and these different like issues they come in contact with specifically because of the time period. I got to learn a little bit about certain history elements that I wouldn't have expected because I'm not like a history buff in any way. I immediately like the characters, I really like the artwork, and I just really really want to read more. Every issue brought new twists and surprises. I felt like it had this like pulpy sort of atmosphere that I very much appreciated. I just really believe that this one should be a hit. The next thing on this list is Take It Back by Kia Abdullah. This is a courtroom thriller that takes place between a girl who is physically disfigured and four boys. Now she is accusing them of raping her. This book does such a good job of talking about so many different types of persecution, so many different types of judgment and, and of prejudice. The main character is a former lawyer who is now a social worker who is helping the victim deal with the trauma she's faced and is helping her get through the trial. The main character I just found so interesting. I so often read books like this that are crime books or whatever and like the detective or the lawyer or whoever just isn't that interesting, the investigator, etc. Whereas I feel like this is one of the ones that I read where like I want to follow this character through more cases. She's just a really interesting individual. I enjoyed that the author talked about her being Muslim and her experience and like the pros and cons of that and like just how much it's affected her life because she's ha because she still like has that faith but she also has kind of a strained relationship with her family because she hasn't done everything that they thought was like ethical in their religion and in their family. The boys who are, are accused are also Muslim and, and the book does a good job of dealing with the racism that they face regardless of whether or not they're guilty. You know so much of the judgment that comes from other people has to do with the racism and not the actual facts of the case. I'd say if you like Law and Order SVU, this is a very similar idea, just like stretched out in book form, and you really get to see all these different characters. Like, the book didn't just talk about the victim, or it didn't just talk about the lawyer, it didn't just talk about the accused, it literally talked to everyone, and I feel like most of the characters were really well fleshed out because of it. Which really helped make the story unpredictable, because you kind of believed that everyone was telling the truth. I really liked Kia Abdullah's writing, and I will absolutely be checking out more from her. Another book I want to talk about is Five Total Strangers by Natalie D. Richards. This is a young adult thriller that involves a girl who gets stuck at an airport during a snow snowstorm, but she's trying to make it back home from her college in time for Christmas. So she ends up meeting up with a bunch of other strangers who are her age, who are stuck just like she is, trying to make it home for Christmas, and so they all decide to just rent a car and go across the country together. I feel like I've heard so many mixed reviews about this one, but I actually really enjoyed it. I just thought it was really fun. And there are definitely some things that are over the top, like any YA thriller. I am so often disappointed in YA thrillers, and for whatever reason, this one really kept me glued to the edge of my seat. I figured out pretty quickly who the bad guy was, and yet I enjoyed the book anyway, and I think to me that's always the mark of a good thriller because they are often easy to figure out, especially young adult ones, and if I can enjoy the journey anyway, then that means it's worthwhile. Now part of the reason I think I connected so well with the story is because I've definitely been in situations like this. My college was a 12 hour bus ride away from my hometown, and so I cannot tell you the amount of times I got stuck at a bus station because we either missed the connection or the bus broke down somewhere or whatever like it's happened so many times and like once I'm stuck at a bus station I will do literally anything to get home like I hate being stuck somewhere it literally freaks me out so much I don't know why but like I have gotten I nearly gotten in cars with strangers just to get the fuck out of there I think if you're just looking for a fun ride this is a really good one if you're the type of person where like the over-the-top shit is gonna bug you, probably skip this one, but compared to a lot of the YA thrillers out there, I think this one is pretty decent. The next thing I want to talk about is another comic, and this one's called Quincredible. This is another one where I've only read one volume. Now, this is a superhero comic, which is not something I'm super into. I don't read any sort of Marvel or DC or anything like that. I just find there's like too much um, background to get into, like so much history that I... And it's too much work. But I picked this one up on NetGalley to read it as an arc and I actually really liked it and I think part of that is because there isn't all this history that I have to know in order to enjoy this one. This is about a kid named Quinn who develops this superpower after some sort of event 
and his superpower is that he is impervious to pain or like he can't get hurt. Now the problem with that is that even though he can't be killed, he does not have any other superpower to go with it. He doesn't have any sort of super strength or anything, so he can only do so much. He really looks up to superheroes and he wants to become one of them, but he just doesn't know how to do that when the only thing he has going for him is the inability to die. He ends up getting this mentor figure who kind of helps him out in that respect, and I love that he kind of realizes that his superpowers that can help him out in this situation are like things that are innate to him. Like, he learns how to use his hobbies and his intellect in order to help him defeat other enemies. And I just think that's so nice to see where it's not like some superpower that was just like gifted to him. Like yes, he has invulnerability which helps him, but the but that's only going to take him so far and the things that are actually going to make him a good superhero, the things that are actually going to make him beat somebody else is the things that he already had before he got the superpower. I thought that this was a really good foundation to build a series on. Uh, they introduced like a love interest that I thought was super nice and like I definitely saw that connection there and I'd definitely be interested to read more of this and I think that a lot of kids will be able to connect this, this one and I don't know, I just think it's so nice to see something that's like not connected to Marvel. <laughs> Next thing I want to talk about was The Way We Fall by Megan Cruz. So this is actually a series I read forever ago. I read this back in high school, back in that 2012 sort of era where all of these different types of dystopians were coming out, all sorts of post-apocalypse things were coming out, just anything where the world was ending or the world was different from ours or just any sort of book where a bunch of kids had to survive in some way. That was like a thing back in those years and I read a lot of terrible ones. But The Way We Fall was like one of the ones I read that I actually just really liked and was surprised by because I didn't feel like anybody was talking about it. So this has to do with the pandemic situation so it might not be something you really want to pick up right now but I do feel like this was enjoyable for the time period. Basically we're focusing on our main character whose father is a researcher and was working on the vaccine or was working on the cure to this pandemic before he went missing. And so now she's trying to survive with her friends and get this vaccine to someone in charge. I really just enjoyed this first book. I feel like it did a really good realistic job at showing how things started to fall apart. It definitely wasn't an overly optimistic view of things, like she does lose a lot of people that she loves and it's kind of a heartbreaking read but I feel like it, the stakes are real and I can appreciate that because I feel like in a, a lot of YA books that isn't always the case. I also really enjoyed her love interest in this first book. Of course there is a love triangle because this is 2012 YA and that has to happen. <laughs> I definitely didn't like the love triangle but I did enjoy the love stories in this first book. Going forward after this, not so much. I just feel like if you're in the mood for this type of book, this is a really good one to pick up. Or the next thing I want to talk about is actually a middle grade book, which isn't something I normally pick up, but here we are, and this one's called That's What Friends Do by Kathleen Barnhart. I listened to this on audiobook last year and really, really enjoyed it. I actually have realized that I do enjoy some middle grade books. This is about two kids, Samantha and David, who have been best friends for a really long time until all of a sudden this new boy comes into school and kind of forces them apart in a way. The new boy and David end up becoming a lot closer and end up becoming friends and he starts making uncomfortable comments towards Samantha and essentially it just drives a rock in her relationship with, with her and David. And I just feel like this book does a really good job of showing young girls that if comments like this are made to them that they are valid to not feel okay about it and to not accept it while also talking to young boys and saying like and not vilifying them but also telling them like you can't do this and like if you see other people doing this it's not right and like here's the line don't cross it like these are things I just feel like we should be teaching children and we should stop fucking like beating around the bush and pretending like they can't handle it because they're seeing it regardless. I think so often we look at children and we say like well we can't teach them about sexual harassment because they shouldn't know anything about sex until they're you know 14 years of age or something when really that's not how that works they already know about this and sexual harassment is already happening. Any girl I know when they point back to their like first inappropriate comment that was made to them it's usually when they're like 10 like it so let's stop pretending that 
this stuff doesn't exist and I think this book does a really good job of speaking them, speaking to them at their level and still addressing the issue. The last thing I want to talk about is Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts by by Kate Reculia. Reculia. By Kate Reculia. I'm saying it the same way every time. So this is another sort of teenage detective story except adult. The girl at the center of the story, Tuesday Mooney, is not a teenager, but I feel like it's that same sort of vibe. I honestly feel like this is just the adult version of Truly Devious, which I loved. So if you like that, definitely check this one out because I feel like not enough people are talking about it. Essentially, there's this huge game set up by this eccentric billionaire and people all over the city are participating because at the end of it, you get to win part of his fortune. Tuesday Mooney decides to try and solve this because she loves games and she loves trying to figure things out. She gets her best friend who is also trying to help her as well as this guy she meets and starts to have feelings for and this little girl who lives down the hall from her who she sees as kind of like this younger version of herself. I love Tuesday Mooney as a character. You know, I love any female character who's smart and tough but also kind of a mess. That's totally up my alley. Like, the, all my favorite characters are characters like that. I relate to them, mostly in the bit of a mess sense, but forget everything else. I love anything that involves a game. I love things that are detective stories. This was just all sort of made for me. I will say I didn't particularly care about the love interest things as much, but every other aspect of this book totally worked for me. Like, I thought that reading other people's points of view wouldn't be as interesting, especially like the little girl down the hall. Precocious children don't really do it for me. That usually is something that really irritates me, but I actually like this character in this book, so I actually enjoyed reading from her point of view. I think the author did a really good job of making everyone very interesting. I would love to see a sequel in this series because I would 100% be on board for that. So that is a small list of things that I believe are underhyped and deserve more attention. I hope you like this video and I hope you come back in soon. Bye.